Hello, welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's myself, Paul Neal, and I'm just here to address a couple of you know talking points just regarding yesterday and obviously Stephen Kenny's first squad announcement. There was obviously going to be people left out, people annoyed over it, and um, you know, obviously a lot of people were concerned about the kind of I suppose lack of defenders. I, I think something good with Stephen Kenny is now that you know with the the old way about going about things, there, there was a provisional squad, which he called a standby list. Same thing. Um, but now we won't be publishing a standby list. So you won't really know who's on that provisional squad anymore. And he's just coming out with a final squad, which I actually think is far better to do and privately let the players know that they're on standby. And I think that's a better way of doing it. Um, because of all the stuff previously, I think people... Are kind of, we're kind of worried going, oh, okay, well, the, maybe they're not even on the provisional. A lot of players that were probably left out probably are on there. Regarding the defenders, the defenders that he's picked, okay, Dara O'Shea might not be in there, but I like if we are to get to the Euros by this time next summer, or, well, it'll be past this time next summer, but, um, but if we are to get there by next summer, we are more than likely going to have Dara O'Shea in the squad. I mean, let's be realistic. If he's playing well in the Premier League, Stephen Kenny likes him. He had him as captain. Well, he was one of the captains when Malumbi wasn't playing um, in the 21. So I don't see how O'Shea being left out to go and help the 21s qualify for our first ever tournament is actually a negative. I don't. I, I think they need him more than we do. I think Duffy and Egan are going to be first choice. Um, Seamus Coleman is going to be, it seems, a utility player in that. Like, he'll probably start right back. And if he wants to go with Doherty, he might use Seamus in a back three and play him more centrally, which I actually asked him in the press conference. And he said, yeah, he goes, well, look, I have an option to play Seamus left back, right back, centre back. You know, he's that good. He can play in those positions. Let's not forget, Matt Doherty played left back as well. He already played there for us in, in qualifying. Um, Probably not his best position, as we all know. But at the same time, let's just kind of just move away from that for a minute and let's go up front and talk about the situation up top i was really happy with the strikers that were picked i would have liked to see an obafemi in there as well but i understand the logic behind it he basically said that he would be having lone strikers and wide players beside them which in this case michael obafemi is a strong lad but he's a small lad so is aaron connolly and so is troy Parrott. if you're comparing them to adam Eda and David McGoldrick. So all the rest of the players, bar Ida and McGoldrick, are different players to, you know, you've got Shane Long, quick, fast, get in behind. Troy Parrott is actually good with his back to goal. He actually kind of compared to him to David McGoldrick. I still think he needs to bulk up in the gym. He's still grown, he's only 18, so that will happen. And then you have Connolly, who's, um, he's still he's still small, but for a striker. So I think he he can use him on either side and he's used him like that for the 21s and he really likes him. And I think he gets the best out of Aaron. But, you know, I just see a lot of negativity online. I don't, don't think it really needs to be warranted. I mean, we've asked for long enough for the manager to try and go for it and try and, you know, go for, play attractive football and try and score goals. Now we've got players in there that are young, hungry, and he's will we've got a manager that's willing to give him a chance. And I don't understand how you can be criticized and you know, saying you're a terrible manager. You haven't even managed a game yet for the country. So it's just like just saying, can we just get a bit of common sense here and let him manage a few games before we start judging the manager? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, you know, look, there are players there that got left out as well. You've got Sean McGuire, Scott Hogan, um, James Collins, you know, these players got left out too. I know Obafemi scoring in the Premier League and stuff like that. And, you know, I said it all along. I think he should be in there. But if the manager's came out and he's addressed the reasons why, then we have to back the manager in this scenario. It's not to say that Obafemi won't be in the squad next month when we play against Slovakia. You know, and people are going mad about his tweets. I kind of like his tweets in a way because it showed that he's hungry and... He was disappointed. It shows he cares. So I don't necessarily take it as a bad thing. you got to remember at the same time, these lads are human beings. They're not just, you know, robots. Go, oh, you're going to play. Yes, sir. They they have emotions like every like all of us. So, 
you know, get behind the lad. I was speaking to him yesterday, and he was saying, look, nothing's going to get me down. I'm going to keep my head up and uh, do my thing. So hopefully he gets back into the squad. He'll probably be in the under-21 squad, which is announced tomorrow. So himself and Afalabi have played together at Southampton. And hopefully they do some good things in the 21s. Let's hope. Uh, but look, I have to say that I'm really happy with the squad. I know I did a reaction video on already, but I wanted to kind of come back and address some of the, some of the situations. And Stephen Kenny as well. He addressed the situation why he had a, li a little amount of defenders as well. Is because you can only have 20 outfield players and three goalkeepers. So there'd be no point in bringing, as he said, two extra. So you probably would have had an extra defender in there, which probably would have, you know, covered all the numbers. But he did make a point that James McLean and Robbie Brady can play left back or left wing back if needed. So, and they're players that he trusts. He really likes Robbie Brady as well. And, and, and let's not forget, like I did say before making the video last week that, you know, Jeff Hendrick could have a club. Um, he's gone to Newcastle now. And then we have Shane Duffy's likely to go somewhere other than Brighton. I mean, he deserves to play first team football. He's good enough. Um, I think everybody watching this will agree that he's good enough. And if he's playing first team football, he's a definite starter for Ireland. So again, and that brings me back. You know, Lenehan's obviously going to be the one who's back up, and then you've got Duffy and Egan, who you know, really good centre half pairing, and then you have. Enda Stevens and Matt Doherty or Seamus Coleman, whoever you want there. That's a really good back four in it, probably a system where he's going to play a 4 3 3. So, and he's made out a point that that's the system he's going to play, and that's why Oba Femi doesn't fit in it this time around because he's still learning to play out wide and he plays in it too. I understand his reasons behind it, um, and I know play, uh, people don't necessarily agree with it, and that's fine, everyone's entitled to their opinion too. But all I'm asking for is maybe we can just get a rally round and, and just get behind the manager. Like, let's trust him. What the He's doing something different. All the other managers have played it safe before him and, you know, picked their favourites and stuff. Stevens came in and he's picked, you know, he, this, the team that he believes will get results. And we have to trust in that until results show us otherwise. That's what I believe anyway. You know, I'm happy to see the likes of James McCarthy back in there, Harry Arthur back in there, experience, and they've played in tournaments with us. And as well, James McCarthy is playing in the Premier League. And when he's playing regularly, he's class. So, look, um, I think there's way more positives than negatives. People will moan anyway. People will tell me I'm a gobshite, which is fine. They're entitled to say that if they want to say that. But... At the end of the day, all I'm saying is we need to get behind the team and we need to get behind the manager. We've moaned for long enough that we don't do this. We play terrible football. We lump it. Here's a manager coming in and trying to bring in new players. We've been crying. Like everyone said, oh, well, Mick wouldn't play any of the young players. And here we have a manager picking young players and we still have people moaning. Let's just get behind the team. Okay. Come on, you boys in green. <laughs> Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Um, you know, are you one of the people that is positive about Steven's squad? Are you one of the people that aren't? You know, let's not forget that, you know, Obafemi could come in for McGoldrick if McGoldrick doesn't heal from his foot injury. So let's just see how things play out. It's not the end of the world. Um, Obafemi will be chomping at the bit if he gets his chance to come in there anyway. So anyway, as I said, let us know your thoughts in the comments. And uh, yeah, come on, you boys in green.